So today I was in a uh, mood for sowing. I want to try to sow seeds every week so that I can get lots of plants started. So I sowed the seeds for the Painted Daisy Single Mixed Colors by Fairy Morse. It's a perennial so I look forward to transplanting it into different pots and having it come back year after year. And then I had planted some Aster Kriegel Mixed Colors. These are only annuals, but still I love the colors. I love how they look. And these are really old seeds. Uh, Summer Squash Saffron Prolific Straight Neck. I'm hoping it'll pop up. Um, it's since 2019 from Burpee. And if so, it's great to steam or barbecue and have that on the side as a side dish. So I also so sowed the Fairy Morse Organic Summer Squash. This is a new batch of seeds I just bought because I ran out of my other one. There was a year where I grew three zucchini plants and it gave me unlimited um, squash and we made um, zucchini bread all all season long so it was yummy and vegetable fairy morse watermelon black diamond I sowed the seeds for it and then I'm gonna divvy out the seedlings um, between myself and my family and hopefully I can provide a lot of food for several families um, just for food security and just for lots of food to eat, lots of options, lots of variability and lots of nutrition. So I mixed the soil between the Costco organic raised bed soil, which is very high in nitrogen and nutrition. And I mixed it with some vermiculite and sphagnum moss. So last week I sowed some seeds. Um, that's the delphinium and it's supposed to stay in a pot Johnny's Gonfrina by Color Rose I love that one it looks like little strawberries Aster Annual Pastel Color Mix Gold Dust Alyssum by Fairy Morse and what do I have here English Daisy Double Mixed Color by Fairy Morse. Oh, look, I didn't look at it carefully. It's got little green st um, starts. Hopefully those are the flowers because I've been wanting to, to grow them so badly. Canterbury Bells Cup and Saucer. Purple Coneflower, which is a perennial. St. John's Wort. I'm going to keep it in a pot because it can spread. Shasta Daisy and this last one is Salvia Blue Sky Salvia which ha has a beautiful blue color so um, I wasn't really wise earlier I was watering it by from the top with a watering can and it was moving the dirt around and at this point since I see little sprouts um, also, I was watering it from the top so that it'll dilute some of that soil because I think that soil is really strong and I don't want to burn the seeds. So um, I watered it about three times and dumped the, the very nitri nitrogen rich water. And so now I'm going to water it from below because I have this dish that I have it in. So it'll bottom water and um, hopefully it'll be a gentle watering because usually I'm so rough that I water everything um, in, in haste and it moves the dirt around and it kills the seedlings. So hopefully 
I'll have success this this go. So friends, these are the plants that I sowed in those pots and my gardener St. John's wort. They're really pretty and they have some beneficial um, uses if you make it into it's a medicinal herb and you can brew it in a tea for treating insomnia, depression, anxiety, confusion and used topically in the form of essential oils to treat sunburn, arthritis, muscle pain. So it sounds like it has a lot of good benefits and so I really wanted to to grow it and it looks really pretty. So that's what I'm going to have hopefully. And delphinium, I'm going to keep these in pots. Keep them at bay. Blue duet mix. And I believe you can get seeds from every single blossom. So that is pretty good. And then purple coneflower. I already have one um, that I bought on clearance from one of the big box stores last year. And it's coming back. But I wanted to grow more so that I can have some, some more in various parts of my garden. I love multiplicity and also I can give some to my family and friends and I love that it's a perennial. Love it, love it. And it also has medicinal properties. And this is so pretty. It's an annual. I love asters. So this one has like that spiky puffy ball type of appearance and it's pastel colors so I had to grow that. And I love how Shasta daisies look and look at how full the blooms are. And I'm hoping I can achieve that this year. It's a perennial as well. I love that. Then I got these Johnny's Gonfrina bicolor rose a couple years ago. Actually more than a couple. And so I love how they look like little strawberries with the green leaf and the pink and white flowers. And I really love this English Daisy double mixed colors. I love the white, the pinkish purple, and then these that have like the darker edges. It's just so pretty. I would like to grow this Canterbella, Canterbury Bells cup and saucer mix. It looks so cute and I'm thinking it does attract bees. Um, I love that it's a perennial as well, so this will be the first time that I'm growing it, and I hope it comes up. I'm growing this Alyssum Gold Dust, and um, it's really pretty, and I'm going to try to grow the purple one as well. Supposedly it smells really sweet, um, which attracts the pollinators. I tried to grow it once, but it didn't come up because I tend to like water my plants too hard so I'm, I've been um, trying to gently water them nowadays so we'll see if they come up and then this blue sky sal salvia it's so pretty it's like a bluish purple and um, it'll definitely attract bees and pollinators and it gets not too tall so that's pretty good and I'll just plant it under my fruit trees after I transplant them out. Hi friends so I decided to grow a ton of melons this year being that it rained so much I have a lot of water so that'll go into the melons so I have this Dixie Queen watermelon and I don't know how it tastes. I, I believe I grew it a couple years ago and I think it was pretty good but I'm going to try to compare them to the other melons and just grow um, a bunch. And I have Tigger melon and these are small so those would be good like after school snacks for the kids. And then next I have Crenshaw Melon. My husband really likes this one because it's not, it doesn't have the musky scent of cantaloupe. So he likes it. It's a cleaner taste. 
um, and it doesn't have a uh, scent. We're also sowing the seeds for tender sweet orange watermelon and those look like a big variety and I wonder how they taste. And the Kajari melon which looks really cool. Um, I'm going to see if it grows. I tried growing it once and it didn't come up so we'll see how it tastes. And those will be a good snacking one for the kids after school as well. So these are all my melons, aside from a couple flowers, the Creco Aster and the Zucchini and the Straight Neck Squash and the Painted Daisies. About three weeks ago I tried to sow some seeds here. I haven't seen anything come up. I don't have the greatest luck with leeks, so this whole tray is supposed to be leeks, but I never see anything popping up. And that tray is supposed to be golden double sunflower, and sunflower velvet queen hasn't come up yet, probably not hot or sunny enough. And I have a bunch of bush beans that are growing and right there as well. So I'm gonna have to transplant them. Sunflowers of various varieties not coming up yet. And this one I'm excited about. It is the Chrysanthemum Robinson Mixed Colors. And I have five plants there, so I'm happy. Sunflower. A couple carnations are coming up. One burpee marigold is coming up. I just planted this recently. I wanted loofah and mm, long bunching onions. I don't know if they're going to make it. And I have a couple Cosmos, let's see, three Cosmos, and that's about it. It's pretty sad, less than 50% of them <laughs> germinated, but what happened was it got, it drowned a little bit and really cold, the seeds, because it rained unexpectedly, so we'll see if they pop up. So I'm going to be sowing some corn. And this is the variety called from Fairy Morse Corn Sweet Variety Silver Queen Hybrid. So it looks really yummy and I got a big pouch of it. It takes 91 days till harvest. And I'm sewing them real close together because I don't have much room and then I'll prick them out when they're like grass blade tall and um, I'll give some to my sisters and I'll keep some for myself. Hi friends, so I recently went to Lowe's and I spotted this watering can. It's two gallons, it holds two gallons and it has this really big watering spout. I got it for $4.90 or something like that and it was really really nice and I liked it and it's wonderful I've used it and it's so nice to not just carry um, a small amount of water around so this one is my one gallon one and I purchased this I believe at Target it's really cute um, and it's metal so it won't you know get messed up in the sun however it's the spout here is really small and when there are leaves or little particles that get into the the spout on the inside it blocks it from um, having streams lots of streams of water coming out so it's really inefficient and it's only one gallon so it holds very little so like say if I'm watering a large garden bed it takes about 
two or three of uh, turns of this rather than six or seven um, turns of this. So um, I have to use this on my seedlings because it's a gentler um, stream of water than if I were to use a hose, which I don't have a sprayer currently that I can use. I have troughs of water so it's easy to just dunk these cans in the water and then go over to the spot. Like if I use my hose connected from my troughs or my cisterns, there isn't enough oomph. I have, I'd have to turn on the pump and then that would give me too strong of a stream to water my seedlings with. Um, it'll just move the seedlings all about and kill them. And um, at Lowe's I saw another a watering can that was two and a half gallons and it was um, it had two handles. It had a handle like this and then a handle that comes across over top to the other side and that one was uh, movable and I like that it could hold two and a half gallons however it seemed like it was too cumbersome because of that swiveling other handle and I didn't know if it was a source where it could break easily or if it was um, it just seemed really cumbersome to you so I decided against buying that one and I'm so happy I got this one and I think it's normally priced at like nearly eight dollars but I got it because the label said for something so I grabbed myself two of those I should have grabbed another one so I could give it to my sister so she can grow you know water her plants with it as well it's I love it so much too bad it's plastic but but I love it nonetheless oh my goodness I just looked at this I've been watering it a couple days maybe three four days now and I'm seeing the little tomato or let me see yes tomato sproutlets so I didn't tell you guys in my last video what I sewed in these um, jiffy jiffy containers so this is tomato striped Roma this is um, tomato tiffin Mennonite this is a Zoichka tomato it's a yellow colored one this one is Wisconsin 55 mellow oh yellow pear <laughs> um, persimmon tomato Prudence purple tomato orange ox heart green zebra tomato um, Roma tomato pink ox heart tomato brandy wine tomato um, what does this say Garden Leader Monster Tomato, Pretty and Sweet Hybrid Pepper, Small Cherry Hot Pepper, and Anaheim Chili. And then over here, I grew Pasilla Bajo Pepper, it's a hot pepper, Serrano Chili Pepper. Rainbow blend sweet pepper and mild pepper tam jalapeno. So I got a variety of spice levels, and hopefully, along with the spice levels, it'll have differing flavor profiles as well. So I want to try them all, and I grew several so that I can have them for myself as well as. For family and friends and as you know this was my very first batch of seeds sown after I had grown my tatsoi, pak choy and cilantro and Swiss chard so um, I tried to grow some uh, green beans but I've only seen one pop-up of the 
dozens and dozens of seeds so I might have to re-sow those again unfortunately however this is my first batch of tomatoes that I, I grew the seedlings back in like late January or sometime in February and I don't know if you remember but that first two rows was full of seedlings it had like four to six seedlings per container so I separated them out and I was going to do that with these but they were quite small so maybe in a week I will transplant these to separate them out. Unfortunately I wonder if these just needed more time or more sunlight but the yellow stuffing tomatoes there's only one plant <laughs> but at least there's one because earlier when I looked there were zero plants and then as far as this variety black sea man tomatoes there was only one sprout one tomato seedling and now this one has two and that one has two no, it has one and one. So hopefully the others will come up. So as for those two, the vintage wine and the Kellogg's breakfast, I separated them out. I'll show you the other ones. So these are all the ones that I plucked out of that pot and separated them. So in all, I had 12 vintage wine and 15 Kellogg's breakfasts. So I separated them out. Some are real tiny. Glad to see that they're all alive and I'll be giving them out to my family pretty soon when they get a little bigger and healthier. And that is so cool. I just planted these out, sowed the seeds not that long ago. And today when I was watering it, I saw a little sprout right there. And this one went and beat it and popped up. Now, let me see what they are. Okay, so it's Armenian cucumber and some Genovese basil and dill that I put into the same pot. So it, it has like several plants in one pot. So when I give it to somebody, they get a little like um, three plants in one. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. And they could separate it out or they can keep it together and just transplant it into the ground because the Armenian cucumber will climb up something and then at the base will be the Genovese basil and the dill. I am so excited. I'm seeing the little stems coming out for the gladiolas. So I'm really, really super excited about that. And then I planted these about a couple weeks later because I didn't have pots and then I got some pots later on. So it's been a long time waiting for these to pop up and I may have sown them too early but my chili peppers, my first batch, have come up and looks like my second batch of tomatoes that I just planted, sowed, are going to beat the chili peppers to the punch. And so I have tiny little seedlings everywhere. Some of them really didn't come out, but maybe they will soon as it heats up, as it warms up. However, I tried to grow Armenian cucumber and other northern pickling cucumber and other herbs, and they did not pop up. So we'll see if I have to reseed those. This sunflower is growing so tall. It's about three and a half feet tall and it's gonna be a multi-blooming variety, which I got the seed from um, a sunflower um, last year. I grew the sunflower and I kept the seed head, the flowering head, and kept all the seeds. And luckily it didn't get eaten by something because squirrels and stuff, squir squirrels and birds like to get at them, so. I love that it's so big already. Hopefully it gets even taller and it helps to shade some of this stuff out so it doesn't get too hot. I mean, of course, right now we do need the heat, but 
it's gonna get there really quick hi friends so today I'm doing some seed blocking cell blocks so I've created the soil or you can buy the Jiffy organic natural seed starting mix which has the sphagnum moss and the peat moss and also the soil and it's very lightweight and it's a great mix for making your seed blocks your soil blocks and you can also put a little bit of your compost in there so I made my mix and it has a lot of that peat moss there the perlite the white stuff to um, help it drain and so I'm gonna make the seed blocks and put them in these trays these are in it these are inexpensive trays because I just got some Costco croissants and then I took the container and cut it in half and it'll make a nice tray and I don't have to buy any because those can be quite costly and I can use it for a season or, or two maybe even three if it'll last and just keep making a lot of seedlings with a small amount of soil. So here I have the, I think they are two inch by two inch um, blocks and there are five, no, there are four, four um, blocks and it has the dibbler in there. So let me make this, the blocks, and then I'm gonna sow a lot of seeds, um, a lot of flowering plants and also vegetables and stuff like that. Here we go. So basically, you just stick this seed, the block in here and get a nice amount of soil in there. And you stick it in the tray and you press it and there you have it. And you can make several rows, which is what I'm gonna do now. So I made four rows, or if you look at it this way, four rows. Um, so that would make six of each plant. Um, so unfortunately, well, I wanted more sea star mix of burpee aster. So I did two rows of those. And then I did one row of Munstead lavender. Those seeds are really tiny. And then Baker Creek double dutch rose. And the reason why I chose the various things are so that I can differentiate them. I was gonna do a whole thing of lavender, but then I wanted to know the differences between the true lavender, the Munstead lavender, and the English lavender. So I just decided to sew them separately. So this tray has those, and I'm gonna keep making more. So as you can see, you can make the soil blocks as I have here and I am placing a little more spacing between um, the blocks in this tray so I can water over here at the edge so that it'll kind of percolate into the blocks because um, if you water on top of these like with a really harsh spray um, you're gonna make the box come apart and they'll just melt together into a slush. Um, that happened during the rains and it kind of melted all my blocks together. So in this tray I'm growing Persian basil and Walla Walla onions. So you can't see the seedlings, the little seeds in there, I don't believe. They're little black seeds for the basil and I'm going to cover it up. And then I got this Walla Walla onion and I wanted it to have some protection. And so I placed, um, I got the, the onions with the um, 
outer covering because the seeds are really tiny and it helps to um, see them and to seed them um, with this coating, this pink coating. So I put one in each well and um, So I have sown trays and trays of plants and I've labeled the rows if they're in rows and I have a ton of Walla Walla onion seeds from Fairy Morse. So this is a whole tray of Walla Walla onions, Walla Walla, Walla onions and a whole tray here as well. So let me show you what I sewed today. So today I sewed a ton of these Fairy Morse Easy Sew Onions Walla Walla and they're pelleted seeds so they have an outer covering that make them larger because normally the seeds are small and it's hard to see and hard to sew them. And another thing besides being easier to see and easier to sew is that it has a layer of protection, some kind of clay or some kind of mixture that protects the seeds. So I'm hoping since these seeds are from, oh gosh, where's the date? They're from like a year ago or a year and a half. So because allium seeds are not easily viable after, they have a short lifespan, um, I'm hoping that they will come up. So I have these heirloom seeds and um, these are the Persian variety. So I grew them in one of those trays, um, just one row. And then basil, dark opal purple, that's so pretty. And Chinese sweet basil from Baker Creek. And some Italian eggplant, Rosa Blanca and some black beauty eggplant so um we had curry recently and it had eggplant in it and it was it was like so such a lovely flavor eggplant curry um bamboo and lemongrass it, it was so aromatic and tasty so that's what we're gonna grow and um try to do new different applications with different uh, vegetables and the reason why you want to do soil blocks is you use up less soil to plant your seedlings instead of like three and four inch pots you use the, the little two inch um, cubes to grow them in and then um, the roots stay within that um, block and they tend to not move into the next block because of the air gap and um, so that's what I plan to do. You have less waste. You don't need a lot of plastic pots because that's my issue is the plastic pots are really thin and they fall apart and break and you always have to replace them and spend money on them. So I think the investment in the soil block mold um, by Ladbroke was a good idea. So that, that, um, that brand lad broke i i liked it it works really well and i i haven't had any issues with it um so we'll see if all the plants come up um so i'm just gonna lightly spray all my seedlings so the seeds are in the top so you can water it from the bottom here and then it'll soak it up into the cute the seeds into the tops but a great way to so to water the new cubes uh, soil blocks without messing up the structure is to lightly mist it on top and then when the seedlings start to make root then it's nice to um, water it like down below there I'm going to give them all a healthy 
mist. So, so they stay intact. 